Uh, you probably live in Romford. Romford is like, even though it's a dump of a place, I mean, it... Re- God, it's ghastly. I mean, it's like, see Romford and die, I think. That's what they say, isn't it? And it came out pretty low down in the survey the other day of um, the most depressed people. They live in Romford, you know, and I, I can quite understand it. Although my Auntie Ivy used to swear by Romford Market. I mean, she bought everything in Romford Market. Christmas paper, everything. Everything came from Romford Market. She loved it. And uh, friends of mine had a stall there once, because you have to buy a stall... In other words, families have got them and they sell them on. You can't just move in. I think you can be a casual, you know, only for, for so much time. But the rest of the, most of the people own their, their stalls. And you could pay a lot of money, pay fifty, hundred thousand pounds probably more if it was in a really, really good position. Because you're looking at something that's going to make you a lot of money for the, uh, for the rest of your life. So Romford is lucky. Uh, Carlos Tevis, what a girl's blouse he is. I saw him, I don't know anything about football. All I know is that uh, somebody spoke to him and he threw a queenie fit and so he disappeared back to the homeland and then somebody said, I think you better crawl back and beg for your job back. Uh, but uh, the fans do not want him. The Man, the man City fans aren't remotely interested. On your bike, Tevez, they've said. You've a, you're a disgrace to the team. You're an embarrassment to the country. Go home. We don't want you. He's lost about nine million quid, and that's why he came crawling back, you know, with his baby, because he, he, he'd done the queenie fit when the manager said to him, Look, I, I think he said, I, I want you to play, and he said, I don't want to play. I'm not playing. And so he then got on his little girly bike and sort of scooted back to wherever he comes from. And, uh, and then the next minute, he's back at the airport again, but the fans are going, no, 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 go home. Go home. You're an embarrassment. They paid 30-something million for him. You know, big girl's blouse like that. Send him home. Let him do knitting for the rest of his life. life. Knitting patterns and stuff like that. So uh, they don't want you. And then they had his agent going, you know, he's actually back where he belongs. He was the one who walked out. He was the one who... Nobody kicked him out. He did the big girly thing and minced off like the, gir- like the girl's blouse that he is. And then he's come crawling back because he wants the money. How much did he get paid a week? Quarter of a million quarter of a million pounds he gets paid per week. I mean, it's obscene. It's obscene amount. Small wonder these people think that they're intelligent and think that they can do everything. They should turn around and say you're in breach of contract on your bike. On your bike, go away. Uh, not going away, but very much pushing herself out there. Prince William's wife, Kate. Lots of admirers on Valentine's Day. Lots of little kids waving flags. We love you, Kate. We love you, Kate. Because they've been given them by their parents. Do, do this. Wave, wave, wave the flag. Chantel, wave the flag. Kylie, wave the flag. You, you'd be in the papers. Look, when you get on the table. Hello, we love you. We love you. They're all ill outside a the hospital. They push them all outside the hospital. Stand there and try and look as though you're not about to die. Wave the flag. Wave the flag. We love you. And she looks good. I mean, she does look good. Somebody gave her some very nice uh, flowers. And, um, I mean, she does look... Of course, all, all the people that go out and follow her now, or as I prefer to call them, stalkers, go out there and they go, of course, everything she wears, she looks fantastic in. You know, and, and she does. So, in fact, the coat that she wore yesterday sold out on this website within hours of her wearing it in Liverpool. Do people go out there? They see, see somebody wearing something and go, I'm going to go and buy that, without realising that if you're 35 stone, it ain't going to fit. It doesn't look good on you, OK? If you're hoop earrings, minger, Ugg boots, OK, and uh, a dirty grey tracksuit, it's not for you, is it? It's not for you. Oh, blimey. They're, they're, they're now saying that uh, Mrs Tanner is set to return to Coronation Street, and at this time she'll be called Rita and not Elsie. Rita Sullivan and Dennis Tanner's romance is so strong that a well-placed source revealed don't rule out a summer wedding. Good Lord, Barbara Knox is 78. I mean, there's a limit to how much longer they can keep pushing. I mean, Betty Turpin went, because all she did was come up from behind the bar and go, do you want hot pot, love? And they went back in the kitchen. Nobody ever saw this hot pot. I've never even seen it being made. I mean, she didn't look like you could ever let her near gas, to be honest with you. She looked like she was about to blow herself up. And she disappeared into the back. We never even saw the kitchen in the Rover's Return. Do you realise it's the only thing we've never seen? They they talk about it, which is like hot pot. And they've always had a little thing on the, on the counter. With, and nobody's ever shown us a kitchen. Why? Because they don't have one. They don't have it. It's all bought in. It's all bought in from Patex round the corner. They go round there and they sort of bring it all in. They take all the wrapping off and pretend it's Betty's hot pot. I'm not sure a wedding for a 78-year-old. Is that all right? A 78-year-old in the street? I mean, I do like her. Don't get me wrong. I'm not... I don't have a problem with her at all. I'm just thinking. I mean, she's, she's being stretched, doing lines now. I mean, even having a drink in the Rovers. Because uh, Christo likes a drink, doesn't he? It's amazing. I mean, his mother... Like, my God, she sounds fearful. You wouldn't want to go out with her to a bar. She'd drink you under the counter. She really was. She goes out there and he was say, he took her to Mykonos. Fat lot of use that would have done Mykonos. But there, there was old Marfufas in the bar, knocking back the gin like, like a gooden. 
and and Christo's there, and apparently she she does you know she doesn't like it if she can taste the tonic. I mean, what does that mean? I mean, she might as well just lie her on her back, put a straw in her mouth or a funnel, and just pour it in, and then leave her there. Old Ma Fufas, you can only imagine what she looks. I bet she looks like my auntie Enid. I've just got this feeling I know what she looks like. Without even meeting her, I think I know what old Ma Fufas looks like. I bet she looks the spitting image of Christo, only she's in Mamma Mia. So she looks exactly like Christo then, exactly like Christo, because they deliberately went out and found a lot of sort of typically Greek-looking women. <laughs> I bet she looks like Christo. Slightly long hair and probably a slightly bigger bust, but not much, not much. Anyway, three... Uh, no, it's not, it's 4.25... God damn, that's very exciting. There's a woman here who was bitten by a crocodile whilst walking her dogs in the garden. It wasn't over here, it was in uh, Darwin. To be honest with you, I'm terrified of crocodiles. I've seen them. I used to watch that Steve Irwin programme and I used to think, you, you know, you're going to come a cropper one of these days. And lo and behold, he did. But uh, it wasn't by any of the crocodiles or things like that. He was, he was quite good at picking up snakes. Me, can't abide them. Cannot abide snakes. I can't abide either Durham County Council. What did Durham County Council do that makes them the thickest council in the country? I mean, it was very nice. They put up a bus shelter, ladies and gentlemen, and it cost £5,180. Isn't that lovely? Well done, Durham Council. £5,180. They put up the bus shelter. It's great. Unfortunately, no buses have been on this route for the past five years. Some thicko in Durham Council... No, actually, it's two years. Two years they've not had a bus on this route and they spend £5,500 putting up a bus shelter. How dim do you have to be? They then spell... Because they already spent 1800 demolishing the last one and they're putting up the new one. Now they've spent £580 to move it elsewhere. I mean, they are thick up there, aren't they? It only goes to... You know, further up north, dum, dum, dum. By the time you get to Durham, they really are completely balmy mad. Here's, here's a nice new bus shelter. Yeah, but there's no, there's no buses on this route. No buses at all. Bit of a shame. Daily Star this morning. Here, roses are red, violets are blue. Princess Kate, I love you. It's a little boy whose mummy's pushed in for... Give her a card. Give her the card. Tyrone, give her the card. And there's a lovely picture in one of the papers today. I was trying to find it, actually, earlier on. It's, it's another My Big Fat uh, Gypsy Wedding. Only this is... Big, I didn't see it. I can't bear to watch things like that. They, it's, it's such vulgar, disgusting people. And this is big, fat, gypsy children. They've got one little girl there. She's only just got married, and they have a little child, and already she puts lipstick on and eyelash, eyelashes and everything else. And this, this girl, who is barely 20, goes, we spend thousands on her. And all I'm, all I'm asking is, where'd you get the money from, darling? Where'd you get... I feel like Jeremy Kyle. Where'd you get the money from, love? Where'd you get it from? Do you pay tax? I shouldn't think so. And did you see that ghastly couple on this morning yesterday? No, I don't mean Ruth and Eamon, because they are a pretty, pretty naff couple, aren't they? He just, he looked like he was asleep through most of yesterday. I have to sit there and laugh at him, because he's there and I... The old fat boy was out for the count, and they, they put a cu couple on yesterday. He was supposed to be an Elvis impersonator, but sounded a wee bit too camp for that, and she was supposed to be a Marilyn Monroe lookalike. I mean, I'm assuming it was after she was dead, because she certainly didn't know anything like Marilyn Monroe. You know, the very idea she had a big bust and had bleached, badly bleached hair does not make you Marilyn Monroe. But then, uh, it, he then proposed to her. She looked a bit horrified, actually. I was equally horrified. I thought, God in heaven, how embarrassing. You've got to marry somebody who dresses like Elvis. It's your worst nightmare, isn't it, really? And would you like to marry me... Oh, God, we're on television. And Eamon's there, and I'm thinking, God, look how look how embarrassed, you know, she looks. Poor old Ruth Langsford. Because she's not Ruth Holmes. She's Ruth Langsford. She's obviously hedging her bets on that one, quite rightly. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower and E.T. having meetings, which was lovely. And uh, another picture of poor old Amy Childs. That hair is ropey, love, isn't it? I didn't realise how far you were receding back. Perhaps it's an Essex trait. Because we, we've had it a little bit, haven't we, from... Um, from Mark Wright, he's also receding. Not good news, is it? And the most honest man in Britain, which prompts me to ask you the question this morning, would you be as honest? His name's Aaron Large. He was cleaning the streets of Southend-on-Sea. I mean, that in itself is a bit of a joke. And he found a Rolex. And it, it wasn't just any old Rolex. It was an Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph. And uh, for Aaron Large, rather than pocketing this watch, which is worth £21,000... He, um, he handed it into the police. Now, luckily, because it's got a, a number on it, the police will find it. I mean, you have to ask yourself the question, don't you? What sort of Burke goes to South End wearing a £21,000 watch? Make up your own answers as we go through the programme this morning. He says, I'm used to finding loads of fake gold. 
course he is, because he comes from Rayleigh and Essex, and I should imagine the place is awash with it. But uh, on this one, he said, I knew it was genuine. Uh, strangely enough, it has not been reported missing or stolen. I bet it hasn't. I bet it hasn't. You're in South End and you're wearing a £21,000 watch. You only have to ask the question, don't you? What sort of people go to South End? Answer, Londoners. What's, you know, are, would they be classed as very rich people? I shouldn't think so. And yet somebody was wearing a £21,000 watch and they lose it on the street. You would know if my watch becomes loose, I know it's going to fall off. If I sort of, because my, the, the strap on mine, and mine's not a particularly expensive watch, it's a, a Raymond Vial watch. But in fact, if I move my wrist in a certain way, and I try not to do it that often, the, uh, the catch pops open and, and you do think that the watch is going to drop off. If it was a £21,000 watch, I would be extremely mindful of if it, you would recognise if it was on your wrist or not on your wrist, unless, of course, you were drunk. And if you were drunk in South End, that means you're a certain sort of person. You're certainly not going to be class, put it that way. You're going to be kind of down there with the fish and chip and sausage and batter brigade, but you're wearing a £21,000 Rolex. In other words, you're probably just a little bit too flash for your own good. Because I don't know anybody who wears a £21,000 watch and goes out for cockles and mussels and winkles and a sausage and batter in South End. I just really don't. It's LBC 97.3. Time now is 4.30.